Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Thanks for joining me again today for a painting video. I'm going to be creating a landscape for you all today, an abstracted landscape, and I'm very excited to get started here. I'm working today on a 6 by 18 inch canvas. That's a very nice 3 to 1 ratio, a nice panoramic view. And we're going to create a rolling vista, a nice stormy valley for you all. And we're going to begin with the sky. I've mixed together there on my palette. I have a number of colors. I'm going to start from the top right, and I have some cobalt blue. I have some Nanthal crimson, some Mars black, some white. I have Naples yellow, and I have some cadmium yellow light. I'm going to start today with a little bit of the blue, the white, and the black all mixed together. More white than the blue and the black. Using a flat wash brush, I have marked in the horizon line and some of the basic cloud shapes for this painting. Gonna grab some of the white and just keep adding white as I go along to lighten the sky up. What a nice stormy gray sky today. Sort of matches the weather we've been having here in beautiful Raleigh, North Carolina. Very stormy lately. This painting won't be too fall like except for the sky. I'm gonna go for some lighter colors today but I should do a fall one here soon enough, I think. A little more of the black to make it more of a charcoal gray. Go back over some of these lines and bring out these clouds. Nice storm clouds here, rolling storm clouds. To make this effective, I would recommend that you, at the horizon line, make the strokes to be rather thin and then have them become wider as they get closer to the top and that will give you instant perspective. Make it look like they are coming towards you and rolling away from you and lay properly. If you can imagine there's like an origin point, there's a vanishing point right at the horizon line in the center and then every cloud should be kind of pointing down towards it. Give a nice 3D effect. A little more blue to my mix at the top of the painting. Nice light white at the bottom. Here's some blue and white by itself. I'm not really bothering to clean my brush too often, allowing different grays and hues to mix and mingle. I am changing the mixture of the paint as I'm going along, a little darker, a little bit lighter, to give some variation and variety. We want it to be very light and white at the bottom of the horizon and then kind of more of a blue at the top. Didn't feel like these clouds were dark enough. I'm going to go back in with a little more of the black to my gray mixture. Yeah, and you can see they're all kind of focusing down towards the bottom of the horizon, getting a little wider to the top. A little more of the gray mix, extending upwards. Using a very light touch today, allowing the paint to just run off the end of the brush, not pressing that hard really. And back into my cobalt blue and white mixture. Just going to quickly brush in the top of this. Back to my gray mix. Let's clean up the bottom of this line, make it a little straighter, make it a little lower down as well. Really want the sky to be the focal point of this painting. Bringing in some more of the gray in a few spots down here.
Okay, the next step is to mix together the cobalt blue, namphthol crimson, and titanium white with my clean flat wash brush. We're going to create a nice light lavender color, beautiful purple, and do some really lovely mountains with this purple. A little more blue, should have a little more blue than red, I think, in them. Mountains really are more of a blue, especially at a distance, than they're going to be red. But this is an abstracted landscape, so we can be a little more creative with the coloration. Think of it as an impression of a landscape, rather than all the details. If you watch my channel regularly, you know I try not to get too bogged down with the details of a painting. I like to be accurate, but sometimes it's just fun to play with some colors and to see what happens. I do a lot of my abstracts that way. In my landscapes, I tend to want to go for a sort of looser style, not be overly detailed in what I'm creating, and allow the colors to stand for the different objects rather than putting in every blade of grass and leaf on the tree and in fact this painting has a nice sort of far back almost overlooking view as if you were standing on top of a mountain looking down at a sweeping valley that's really what I'm going for here today mountains are very light in the far distance and then a little darker as they get closer to you I might need to go back in with some darker colors. Those far distant mountains are a little bit too light. They're blending too much with the light gray, and I can't quite see them well enough, but I'll go fix that later. For now, let's just get these other mountains in, and we'll move on. At the end, we can come back and make some adjustments after we see how the whole thing is working together. Some short horizontal brushwork. If I want them to be thicker, I just allow more of the bristles to touch the canvas. Thinner, I just adjust the angle so that just the tip of the bristles are touching, pulling left to right and in the opposite direction. Going to add a little more white to my mixture, Cre recreate that lavender, light lavender color here and pull that across the back. more white, but a few light highlights on these forward mountains, a little bit of the gray there too. Keep your brushwork moving. I have a little bit of a hair there from the brush, I'm just going to get that off. There we go. Okay, back into the white with my dirty brush, and bring in some of these highlights. We can go back and adjust them as we go along. If you find that you're getting stuck in one corner, working on the same spot over and over, then jump somewhere else and come back to it later. It's very easy to get bogged down as you're working through this, easy to get stuck in one area. Best to keep things moving, keep things active. I find that the composition benefits from it overall. A little more white on your brush here. These mountains are shimmering in the light, but muted though it is. They still should have some highlights on them, make them a little more three-dimensional. Okay, back to my purple mix, blue, red, and white, a little more red this time, just to make a few adjustments here. A 
a little bit darker, got a little too heavy with the white, a little more color, and it's fixed. And a little more on the other side. Alright, grab some of the Naples yellow here with my bright brush, nice flat bristles, very straight bristles, and we're going to take this Naples yellow and we're going to use this complementary color to set off against the purple. So you have the yellow playing against the purple directly. Of course purple is made with blue and red and yellow is the other primary color that is not used to make the purple, therefore it's purple's complement. And the two when set next to each other really shimmer. You can think about superhero outfits, they're often in complementary colors, things like blue and orange, purple and yellow, green and red, all complementary. So here I'm taking the Naples yellow. That purple is still a little bit wet, it might be dirtying the yellow a little bit, but that's okay, just add some variation. And once it's dry, you can just go back over the top and increase the intensity a little bit. Play this yellow all the way across. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of the cadmium yellow light. It's a lighter yellow and we're going to highlight a few of the spots here on the first stripe of yellow. A little more of the Naples yellow all the way across. flat wash brush that has the sky mixture on it, more white, and let's create a little reflection of a lake or a river running here, more white there, a little too dark, that's better, and we're just going to have this running along the bottom of this yellow. Quick horizontal brushwork, little zigzags I'm creating. This could almost be a beach scene if I had continued to create waves coming towards the viewer. Almost like you're sitting on a boat looking back, but it won't be once I'm finished with it because I'm going to bring in some greens and that will immediately change it to being a valley scene. A little more white added to my mixture, I'm just filling in the gaps here, covering up all the white between the outer limits of this water, making the water thicker on the ends and thinner towards the middle, sort of imitating the way panoramic photographs look. Abstracting it, of course, the colors are not that realistic, having a strip of yellow like that, but it's fun to play with the boldness of the individual colors. A little more of the gray mixture. Gonna lighten those darker clouds that I added in there. Better, much better. A little more white, a little bit of the blue. Bring in some more of the light blue sky mixture here. Just making a few adjustments. Alright, filling this water in all the way up to that yellow band, making it again a little thicker on the ends. Sort of playing with the perspective here. One thing you could do to create more depth would be to have the water sort of disappear out of view and not have it connect to the right hand corner, but instead have the yellow come down in front of the water on the right hand side, and that would push that whole line farther back. Perhaps this is what I should have done, but I was thinking that's fairly typical, so I thought it'd be more fun to have this sort of bent perspective, almost like an inward U 
happening, if you can imagine that. The water is closer to you on the right and left, and it's farther away from you, sort of bending away from you in the center. At least that's what I was going for. We'll see how it turns out by the end of the painting. As always, if you're painting along with me, I hope you are, you can uh, make adjustments, add things that you like, and you always can use different colors that I'm using as well. All right, we're gonna make a nice green here, with a bit of the black, a little bit of the blue, and lots and lots of yellow. And of course, I'm sure a little bit of the white is in there as well. Nice kind of a dirty yellow green color. And we're gonna fill in the left hand side. I had a short jump there in time. My camera paused on me for some reason. I didn't catch it when it happened, but we are back on track now. You can see I filled in the next layer. Same process, thicker on the left and right and smaller and farther away on the center. Bringing in a little more Naples yellow and a little more of the cadmium light in a few spots up the top here. Again, looking for some variation. Cleaning up these edges a little bit as well. Okay, right into the pure cadmium yellow. We're gonna bring that in along here, blending and covering up any of the sections where the white of the canvas is showing. Bringing that right up against that water there. All right, a little more of the blue, some more of the cadmium yellow there too. Blue and the cadmium yellow light. You can see it creates a nice lighter green color. I'm gonna bring that in as well. Just filling in the bottom portion of this canvas. Still using that horizontal brushwork. Perhaps you may try adding a little green above that yellow stripe above. I'm going to keep it because I'm really going for an abstracted sort of style, but if you would like to make this a little more realistic, you could simply replace the yellow above with some green. I'd also recommend adding a little bit of white to it to make it have some distance and make it look a little more misty. If you want to look more realistic, don't do the yellow stripe. Do a very minty light green stripe instead. And then if you would like it to look exactly like mine, then follow along exactly. A little more lemon yellow here at the bottom. Pure yellow there. Dirty brush, nice and light. Finish that off. Okay, grab some more of the blue with the cad yellow and bring in some darker green here for contrast. Just mopping it in. Back to my Naples yellow. Another layer here. A few more spots with the Naples yellow. I noticed the water wasn't laying correctly, so I'm gonna adjust the bottom of this bank. Okay, grabbing my purple mix, a little bit of the white, and my liner brush. Let's mix up some purple here, more white. Blending that really quickly on the brush. We're gonna go back and we're gonna redefine the top of these mountains a little better. If you look at photographs of mountains, you'll often see that the very, very top ridge is a little darker than what happens below. So, 
you want to have a little more contrast for this ridge line and so you can see clearly where the sky ends and where the mountains begin. So just in a few spots here, I'm going to put a few little lines here where this ridge line is happening. Adding a little more white as I get further away from myself. We want to keep it a little darker than the, mount the mountains below just to give it a better definition. That already was looking better. You can see where the sky ends and where the mountains begin and that's very important. Making that a little taller. Getting some more definition to these mountain shapes that are back there, but they're just too close to in color to the sky. Grabbing some of the white, let's bring in a few more highlights here on these mountains. Just want to make a few small adjustments. When creating highlights, try to think about which direction the light is coming from and where the light would be striking. In this case, I'm picturing the light coming from the right, so I want to make sure my highlights sort of reflect that. Anything facing towards the right hand side should be highlighted. Just gonna better define these peaks. And just like that, it's already looking a lot better, I think. These liner brushes are a lot of fun to use. They do take a bit of practice to get really good at them. How much you press, how much of the bristles you allow to touch the canvas changes how thick the lines are. Use just the tip if you want a thin line. Use more of the side if you want a thicker line. And they come in a variety of sizes that you can get as well. This is sort of a medium liner brush. And we'll just blend out a few spots here. And back to my white. I'm going to create a little bit of a lighter horizon through here, sort of a glow. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch my painting video today. Consider supporting my art and check out my Etsy shop. That's etsy.com slash shop slash impulsive artistry. You can see all of my paintings that are for sale there. I would love it if you leave me a comment below, let me know how you like this painting, and recommendations for future painting videos. I'm going to grab some of the cadmium yellow with a bit of a blue, really make a nice light green, and bring that in with an intensity. More blue, really want it to be green. The other mixtures have been more in the yellow family. Let's go for a green here. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. Do follow me on social media. You can find me at Impulsive Artistry on Facebook, Art Impulsive on Twitter. And here is the final piece with the colors a little adjusted. You can see what they look like.